This is a members, uh, members' business debate on motion number 634 in the name of Ivan McKee on reuse, reusable nappies and the Scottish baby box. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. And I call on Ivan McKee to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr McKee. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and thanks to all the members who have uh, indicated they intend to speak tonight or have come along to listen to this important and potentially transformative debate on reusable nappies in the Scottish baby box. This motion brings together a range of seemingly diverse topics that nonetheless potentially represent significant steps forward in the areas of environmental protection, tackling inequality, business innovation and inclusive growth. It offers an opportunity to make significant progress on our environmental agenda through the land reduction of landfill. It contributes to tackling the poverty trap phenomenon, whereby lower income families, by virtue of not having access to cash in hand at the outset, end up paying more for goods or services in the long run. It presents an opportunity for local SME businesses, the backbone of our economy, and critical to our Scottish growth strategy to innovate, expand, and create jobs. And it contributes to the inclusive, positive, and potentially game-changing centrepiece policy that is the Scottish baby box. I will address each of these in turn. But first, some background. Reusable nappies come in a wide range of options, but are basically thick padded pants. They have a waterproof cover, and are sealed and fastened with Velcro or poppers. They go straight into the washing machine and are dried in a washing line. One child will use a stock of about 20 nappies from birth to potty training, a cost of between 200 to 300 pounds, compared to around 750 pounds for disposable over the same time period. Far from the smelly, cumbersome chore of the past, today's reusable nappies systems are a modern, sustainable option for parents. Many local authorities already provide starter kits for new families and voluntary groups up and down the country and have been working for years through, for example, nappy libraries to engineer a shift towards widespread use of reusables. The environmental issues are stark. Every year, Scotland sends 3.3 million tonnes of waste to landfill, costing local authorities and ultimately taxpayers several million pounds. Any steps we can re take to reduce these costs and the significant impact landfill has on our planet is to be welcomed. Disposable nappies comprise 79,000 tonnes, 2.5% of this landfill fill waste. Disposable nappies take at least 200 years to degrade in the soil. An environmental agency estimates that disposable nappies used over a baby's first two and a half years of life produce 630 kilograms of greenhouse gas. They typically comprise of materials designed to soak up moisture, adding to the waste. They're wrapped in plastic bags, slowing down the degrading process and compounding the impact on the environment. The environmental benefits of reusable nappies are clear. Secondly, we're all familiar with the phenomenon of poverty trap pricing, where things cost more for those with the least. A significant driver of the persistence of inequality in our society, any steps we can take to reduce this will go a long way to securing our policy objectives of reducing inequality. The cost of a full set of reusable nappies can be as much as £300, depending on the choice of solution and product chosen by the family. For hard-pressed families faced with the many often unexpected costs a newborn can bring, this is a lot of money and it's required up front. As I said earlier, the cost of providing disposable nappies over a life cycle of a baby's usage is estimated at around £750. But in practice, this favours the purchase of disposable nappies as a family only needs to find £5 or so at a time to get through the next few days. If implemented correctly, however, the nappy solution in the Scottish baby box has the potential to remove this poverty trap from young families. Thirdly, creating manufacturing opportunities and supporting local small businesses is at the heart of our economic growth strategy for Scotland. Encouraging and rewarding innovation is a key part of that agenda. Shortly before I was elected, I was approached by a local business who in true entrepreneurial fashion identified an opportunity to innovate and create more jobs. The, locally owned the, the, the business locally owned and managed in my constituency manufactures reusable nappies in a factory that has grown over the years to employ 60 mainly female staff in a deprived area of Glasgow. Now winners of multiple awards, they enjoy some success in exporting, a key feature of our Scottish growth strategy, having supplied nappies to the finished baby box. They were excited to hear of the SNP government's commitments to implement a Scottish baby box if re-elected and are ready to expand their operations to meet the demand if selected. Finally, this government has made reducing inequality a priority for this parliament 
and ensuring each child is able to receive a baby box when they're born is a tangible expression of that aim and will play a central part in achieving this ambition. The baby box, similar to a long-standing and successful model in Finland, would reduce inequality by ensuring that children have the best possible start in life all over Scotland. The scheme in Finland has contributed to a fall in infant mortality rates from 10% to 0.2%, one of the lowest in the world, showing how successful this innovation can be. And it's great to see the Scottish Government looking beyond our borders for ideas that can work in Scotland. The Finnish model, despite its great success, is, however, open to improvement and would benefit from some homegrown Scottish innovation. The Finnish baby box provides a single reusable nappy, while useful in introducing the young family to the concept of reu reusable nappies when it is in the wash. They're still required to make use of significant numbers of traditional disposable nappies or purchase their own set of reusables. However, a design solution has been developed locally, whereby for the same price as a single reusable nappy in the finished box, a set of one outer cover together with six or eight washable inserts can be provided, getting the family started off habitually using reusable nappies. I encourage the Scottish Government to engage with the manufacturers who have developed this solution to ensure the Scottish Baby Box provides a solution which exceeds that of the finished Baby Box in enabling young families to make a real and decisive rather than a token, token move away from the use of disposable nappies. Progress is a mixture of steps and leaps, continuous improvements that build on each other to nudge us in the right direction and leaps have the potential to move us forward almost overnight, changing cultural norms and resolving at one stroke problems and challenges that otherwise could take years of in incremental progress to deliver. Every once in a while we are presented with an opportunity to drive a significant societal change. Today we are fortunate enough to pre be presented with two such opportunities. The baby box itself providing the opportunity to, as the finished example shows, deliver significant tangible benefits to young families and also the opportunity to drive an overnight change in what becomes a norm for the use of nappies in this country. I urge the Scottish Government to engage with innovators and to enable the step change we wish to see, making progress on so many fronts with one simple policy decision. Let's make the Scottish baby box an already outstanding innovation in its own right even better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I move to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes, please. Marie Todd, be followed by Miles Briggs. Ms Todd. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And thank you to Ivan McKee for raising this issue. As a mum of three who's used washable nappies myself and an antenatal teacher who's encouraged many other parents to try them, I really appreciate the opportunity to take part in this debate. Let me begin with the baby box. It's a fantastic idea and it says loudly and clearly that here in Scotland we believe that every baby should have a good start in life. It says that we value our children and it ensures that all parents in Scotland regardless of income or wealth, can provide their baby with the essentials. Including reusable nappies in the baby box is a really great idea, and it would say that we value our environment in Scotland too. I mentioned already that I used them myself, but I have to admit that it took me a while to try them. I felt unsure about the outlay. What if they turned out to be more hassle than they were worth? Once you try them, it's much easier than you might imagine. As Ivan said, modern washables are really easy to use, they're easy to wash, they're easy to dry, and I have to say they're also very easy to put on the baby. There's no safety pin involved. They're kind to the baby's skin, they come in a range of colours and patterns, so they look pretty cute too. Most people like them. There is a big upfront cost, but they save you money in the longer term. Despite the washing costs and the wear and tear in your machine, the actual amount that families could save could range from several hundred pounds up to about a thousand pounds. So by including reusable nappies in the baby box, we could potentially bring down the cost of being a parent, leaving families with more money in their pocket. That alone would make it worthwhile, but the environmental benefits are great too. Less rubbish going in the bin means less waste going to landfill. And because the solid waste gets flushed away into the sewage system, it has to be healthier for everyone. Everyone is agreed that disposable nappies take centuries to biodegrade. Here I have a little disagreement with Ivan. I think they take 500 years. But let's say, with figures between 200 years and 500 years banded about, 
This means that if we had been using disposable nappies when Scotland was an independent country, before the union was even conceived of, they'd still be biodegrading around us now. Most babies go through over 4,000 nappy changes before they're potty trained. In the UK, 8 million nappies are changed every day. Disposable nappies make up 2 to 4% of landfill. Clearly, this is not sustainable in the long term. Scotland's committed to becoming an environmentally sustainable country. By including reusable nappies in the baby boxes, we are offering parents and families all over Scotland a win-win option. We give them an opportunity to save money and an opportunity to help Scotland become an environmentally sustainable country. Thank you. I have to say to the member, I have a new way of looking at history now, how long it takes a nappy to biodegrade. Um, I now call Miles Briggs to follow by Gail Ross. Thank Mr. You, Briggs, Deputy, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too would like to congratulate Ian McKee on securing this debate this evening and also in bringing forward this, I think, his first member's debate to Parliament. I'm sympathetic to the sentiments expressed by Ivan McKee and other members who have legitimate concerns about the number of disposable nappies each year being sent to landfill and the very real impact of this on our environment. I'm aware of the various estimates about the percentage of domestic waste made up of used disposable nappies with some suggestions, as Mary Todd has said, that this can be as much as 10% um, of black bin bag waste. And so it's clearly a significant issue and one which is impacting on Scotland's meeting our recycling targets. It will take time and effort for, to persuade parents and parents-to-be to look at alternatives to disposable nappies. But it, it is entirely right of Ivan McKee and others to highlight that modern viable alternative to disposable nappies, which does exist and which are washable, include, including those with integ integral nappy linings. And I'd also like to commend the success of Tots Bots in, in Ivan McKee's constituency. As well as promoting the positives of reusable nappies, I'm also aware of some of the good work that's been trialled around the recycling of disposable nappies and other absorbent hygiene products. And I'd be interested to hear when the Minister's summing up any updates on this and whether previous pilots are likely to be taken forward. With regards to the baby box policy, Scottish Conservatives still remain sceptical about the evidence base for this universal policy and would question whether or not the expenditure on this should actually be focused more on already pressed resources for parents who are most vulnerable or on the lowest income groups. However, given that the Scottish Government have expressed its determination to take forward this policy, we'd be interested to learn about what potential advice will be included for parents in the box, specifically around how we address baby and toddler dental ill health. In a recent parliamentary written answer I received, I was informed that around 4,000 children under five in Scotland are having teeth extracted every year due to decay. And this figure remaining, has remained stubbornly high at this level for more than a decade now. This is clearly an unacceptable situation. And I hope and believe that the information which could be included in the baby box could actually be around dental health and should be included. Encouraging parents to register their newborn child with a dentist as soon as possible, as well as brushing their baby's first teeth with a fluoride toothpaste as soon as uh, milk teeth break through. I've asked a number of parliamentary written questions on the proposed context of the baby box and haven't received any answer to date. But what I would like to see is in summing up how this is going to be developed and the broad aspects of what will be included. An Edinburgh constituent of mine, who is an English teacher, contacted me recently regarding her positive suggestion that the box should contain a good quality baby book. She suggested to me that this would make a statement about our country's belief in literacy and show parents that it's never too early to talk to and read to their baby. And I wonder if ministers will actively consider this idea. To conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, I welcome the debate around how we can reduce the impact of disposable nappies on our environment and hope progress can be made to reduce their use. I also urge the Scottish Government to make sure the baby box contains practical and clear advice on how parents can make sure their babies have the healthiest possible start to life. Thank you very much, Mr Briggs. Gail Ross to be followed by Claire Baker. Thank you, President Officer. I'm also delighted that Ivan McKee has brought this debate before us today. And like Marie, 
As a user of reusable nappies with my son, I understand both the benefits and the challenges of using them. I was first introduced to reusable nappies in the maternity ward at Caithness General Hospital. The midwives there are excellent. They are patient and kind, and they explained everything that I needed to know. I then contacted the Highland Real Nappy Project to ask for more information. They travel around the region meeting pregnant ladies and new mums to answer any questions about using cloth nappies and give out a starter kit, which includes a nappy pail, a couple of different types of nappies, waterproof covers and liners. As Ivan mentioned, real nappies have come a long way since the Terry Telling squares and big pins of the past. No more does a new mother have to struggle with a squirming bairn, correctly folding the nappy and worrying where the pin is going to end up. The nappies are nappy shaped, have Velcro or popper fastenings and removable inserts that are either washable or biodegradable. You do have to be prepared for a lot of washing, but it's small consideration given, given the benefits of using real nappies. My son had zero nappy rash in the two years that we used them. They are much more cost effective in the long term and the initial outlay doesn't have to be that much either as there are a lot of second hand bundles for sale on the internet. They are better for the environment as has been mentioned and greatly reduce landfill and my old neighbour was delighted to regularly see a line full of nappies drying on a nice day. Offering new parents a baby box shows the commitment the Scottish Government has to early years and preventative spend. We all know that giving our children the best start in life prevents future social difficulties and saves governments millions of pounds in later interventions such as in health and justice. Nobel Prize winner James Heckman states that early interventions have much higher returns than other later interventions such as reduced pupil teacher ratios, public job training, convict rehabilitation prog programs, tuition subsidy or expenditure on police. Finland's baby box has been providing support for mothers and babies for over 75 years. And in that time, as Ivan McKee has mentioned, inf infant mortality rates have dropped considerably and the social benefits are almost immeasurable. Here's a little uh, taster of what they provide and maybe what we could think about providing. Mattresses, undersheets, duvet covers, snowsuits in Scotland, yes. Hats, mittens, booties, knitted overalls, socks and mittens, body suits, romper suits, all in unisex colours and patterns. Towels, hairbrushes, baby um, thermometers, nappy, nappy cloths, toothbrushes. Uh, muslin squares, picture books, reading books, a teething toy, bra pads and condoms. In 2006, real nappies were reintroduced to the Finnish baby box, but the baby bottle was left out to encourage breastfeeding. Can I just make the point that even breastfeeding mothers sometimes do things that don't involve their little ones? When I was breastfeeding my son, I attended three weddings throughout that summer, and I wouldn't have been able to do so if I hadn't expressed milk and kept it in reserve for such occasions. And therefore, use of a bottle for the babysitter was essential. But can I also suggest that things like a breast pump, little freezer bags for milk, and sore nipple cream be included as well? I've recently learned that the baby box has already been distributed in one instance in Scotland. Thanks to the kind-hearted nurses in the theatre department recovery room in Dumfries and Galloway Royal Infirmary, one of the nurses received her very own baby box as a gift when she went on maternity leave. The excitement this caused brought the mother-to-be, friends and staff members together and is proof that the baby box not only provides much needed material goods, but promotes well-being, social contact and should be welcomed by all sides of this chamber, including the inclusion of renewable nappies. Thank you very much. I call... Claire Baker to be followed by Alison Harris. Ms Baker, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to speak in this evening's debate and I congratulate Ivan McKee on securing the debate. Uh, when the statistics for disposable nappies are presented, it can make you wish that they had never been invented. With the average baby getting through 5,000 nappies, this results in some 400 tonnes of waste every year going to landfill, which is 2 to 3% of all household waste and a huge cost to our local authorities. As well as this, they present challenges to household waste collections as councils move to smaller bins and less frequent collections, and it's a typical complaint from constituents. 
The manufacturing process for disposable nappies uses large volumes of pulp, paper, plastic and other raw materials, as well as a significant amount of water and energy. And most disposable nappies are not very biodegradable, with many reports suggesting they make up to 30% of non-biodegradable waste, and that nappies thrown away today won't decompose until the 21st century. There are also concerns over contamination in landfill, and these issues are not set to decrease, as many of the companies are looking to expand into new international markets where there's not a tradition of using disposable nappies. However, many parents would not wish that they hadn't been invented. They have become a part of modern parenting, and as the demands of parenting becomes a reality, disposable nappies become one less thing to worry about. So to change the situation in any significant way is a challenge. Um, I did choose to use real nappies for my daughter, and I was probably a typical example of someone who does. And I suspect that this chamber has a higher than average percentage than your usual workplace for people who use the nappies. I was environmentally aware, I had a good income, I was a more mature parent. I did the research. For some people it's not a clear-cut issue. There are arguments that the production, the washing and the drying of real nappies takes you to the same place as disposables. And that the costs are the same, but the initial outlay is much more difficult at a time when money is tight. There's also arguments that the energy costs of production of disposables are then balanced by the energy costs of washing and drying uh, real nappies, which can be too expensive for some families. But on balance, I accepted the argument that real nappies were the more environmental and responsible decision, and it's the one that I was fortunate enough to be able to make. Real nappies could be an option on a lower income, and you do uh, save money with every subsequent baby. And almost every new parent receives lots of baby clothes, more clothes than the baby can possibly wear. Um, and requesting a real nappy rather than an outfit might be an option, but that still needs organisation and commitment to the idea. It is important to have support and advice, and thankfully, given the subject of the debate, I did use top-bot nappies, but I was grateful for the advice from the online nappy lady. I also had friends who were using real nappies, and I lived in Edinburgh at the time, and I had shops that had a selection and gave advice. And if parents are going to make the decision, advice and support on products is important. And this is one of the reasons why I have some reservations about the proposal for including a real nappy in the baby box. I'm not sure that the decision to use real nappies is one you take when the baby is born. For me, it was one that had to be planned for and, and I had to have a commitment to it. And I would have concerns that a real nappy in the box might be unused or at worst end up in landfill. But I would be interested and open to the suggestions that have been made. Um, the baby box has an interesting history. It was introduced in Finland in 1938 for low-income families before being rolled out to everybody in 1949. And in the 1930s, Finland had a high infant mortality rate. Legislation was then introduced to bring the box that mothers had to visit a doctor or a municipal prenatal clinic before the fourth month of pregnancy, steering them into the emerging welfare system and national health service, thus raising the health outcomes for babies and families. So Scotland has a very different starting place today, so we should think about what the baby box is trying to achieve. An increase in the use of real nappies would need a cultural change, and maybe a voucher in the box with contact details of a local network would be a sensible way forward. In my own area, the Fife Real Nappy Network, run by volunteers, provides advice and support for parents. I'm very supportive of the use of real nappies and supporting parents to make that decision and agree that there is potential for the baby box to play a role in this that should be considered and encourage more parents to think about making the change. Thank you very much. I call Alison Harris, we're followed by Julian Martin. Ms Harris. Deputy Presiding Officer, I am delighted to speak in this debate and add my own congratulations to Totspots, an innovative and award-winning company who are proud to advertise the fact that all their products are made in the United Kingdom. Indeed, as the mover of the motion points out in the great city of Glasgow. Even a quick look at their website will show how reusable nappies have moved on from the days when my own children were babies, when pin-held, leaking terry toweling was the option, and a course in nappy origami would have been very helpful. Today, colourful, shaped, easy to fit, reusable nappies offer a fashionable and practical alternative to disposables. I hesitate to call any nappy cute, but some modern reusables do come pretty close. As a mother, I appreciate the time constraints, the needs and resources of busy parents, as well as the requirements of individual babies can vary enormously. The pace of life continues to quicken, 
and the convenience of disposal na disposable nappies is something that has a huge benefit to many parents. Deputy Presiding Officer, because every family has different circumstances, I strongly believe that the choice of nappy is best left to the individual mums and dads. However, I have no issue, and indeed I would encourage the advantages and disadvantages of both types being properly aired in order that parents can make informed choices. The motion is correct to highlight the environmental issues raised by disposable nappies. An astonishing 8 million disposables are used in the UK every day. They now comprise 4% of all materials sent to landfill, take decades to degrade, and yet upwards of 90% of parents still use them. They are the default nappy of choice, and figures show they have an even higher usage amongst lower income families. This, Deputy Presiding Officer, despite the fact that over a typical child's usage of four to 5,000 nappies, Disposables are typically £500 more expensive than reusable nappies, depending on the washing and drying methods used. Of course, the choice for many families may not be one or the other, but a combination of the two types of nappy, depending on daily circumstances. I mentioned earlier how reusable nappies are a world away from how they used to be, be back when I had my children. But I do wonder if every new parent, or indeed nursery, actually now appreciates that fact. Now, moving on to the proposed Scottish baby box, an idea originating in pre-war Scandinavia that could well be used to introduce modern reusable nappies to a new generation of parents here in Scotland, particularly those parents whom figures show are the most resistant to abandoning disposables. Thus, presiding officer, I believe a case can be made to make best use of the available resources by especially targeting those groups who would benefit the most. At a reported cost of £100 per box, some savings could be made by targeting those groups. Oh, sorry, I'll start again. Some of the savings made by targeting those groups could be used to address reported concerns over the, how stable the baby boxes may be for the baby to sleep in and to improve the provision of health and nutritional information, particularly in those areas that have low rates of breastfeeding as well as low usage of reusable nappies. These are suggestions that I do hope can be looked at, but are, no way in, are no way meant to detract from the laudable aims of this motion, a motion presiding officer that I'm very happy to support this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gillian Martin, followed by Mark Ruskell. Ms Martin. Baby Box has, got, has multiple opportunities to engender a behavioural shift in so many areas that will benefit a whole range of desirable outcomes. And the contents of this box are a huge responsibility. The space in the box is finite, as I'm often reminded of when I speak to the Minister with yet another suggestion and what can be included in its contents. The box is not the size of a box that a washing machine goes in, or it's not a baby wardrobe, it's a baby box. In short, what we put in that box has to count. It has to earn its place there. And the proposal that reusable nappies take up some of that precious space hits a number of targets. I think the most compelling one for me is the cost issue for families, particularly when so many new families are struggling to make ends meet. You take the cost of using disposable nappies over a two and a half year period. On average, we heard some figures here today. I, I, my figure that I got to was £800. And you compare that with the cost of reusable nappies. If a family were to invest in a starter pack of around 20 nappies, the cost of putting them in the family washing, we're looking around about £205 a year. And that's a significant saving. And of course, you can use the nappies, as Claire Baker's mentioned, for successive babies. So it's a one-time outlay, regardless of how many children you have. But I'm going to fess up here. I didn't use them. I didn't use them because I couldn't afford that outlay when I had my son. So I think the fact of putting them in the box is going to be a significant change in, in, in that issue there. Um, for, the, for the vast majority of patient, uh, parents, the issue around nappies comes down to how much how much money and how much hassle. And I've talked about the money side, but when you're tired, as new parents absolutely are all the time, um, the hassle question is just as important. And I've spoken to a good uh, few parents over the years who re used reusable nappies, and they're brutally honest. Yes, it's easier to chuck a nappy in the bin to the next one from the pack, but anything, like anything worth doing, patience pays off and a routine is fallen into with reusable nappies. Reusables require a bit of a mindset change, but once you start, 
has been mentioned by Marie Todd, you get used to them and they're just as convenient as disposables. And the resistance to them is often inherited. Stories of pans boiling, terry telling nappies, Alison has just mentioned that, the Alison Harris has just mentioned that, um, are off-putting. I'd just say to members, I was trying to be gentle about this, if you could give the members full name for the official report. The official report can't just say Alison. I know, that's why I said Alison Harris straight afterwards, thank but you. If you put some... <laughs> Oh. So, by including reusable samples in a baby box, we're offering the chance to shift public habit and opinion, even if the use of disposables and reusables is a combination one, like that has been mentioned. And if we look to other nations that have provided re reusable nappy sample, like New Zealand, you'll see that the take-up of so-called real nappies is 95%, which maybe will answer some of Claire Baker's concerns. When we look what's in the box in Finland, um, it leads me on to... I'm going to shoehorn some, another item that I'd like in my wish list that's going to not take up too much space, I hope. Um, the baby box is also an opportunity to protect a new mum's health. And so I can't really sit down without mentioning what that I think is very much um, an important issue here for public health. And that's the access to new mums from maternity pads. And I think they should get their place in the box too. For all new mothers... Uh, for new, new mothers, changing maternity pads frequently the days after childbirth is really important. 70 to 80% of new mums get tears in the perineum during childbirth, and the resulting stitches must be kept clean in order to prevent infection. And sepsis is a very real danger and is a leading cause of maternal death in the UK. And wound infection is responsible for around 15% of sepsis cases. Sepsis, of course, is an extreme outcome, but lack of healing due to infection can also present a range of health issues for the new mum that can lead to them feeling generally unwell at an already vulnerable time and a key point in a newborn's life. Again, it's also a poverty issue. If a mum's struggling financially, she'll go without personal items and use what means she has to provide essential for babies and might not be looking after herself. I'm sorry I'm running over time, but I hope my point's well made. You have indeed made very good points. Call Mr. Ruskell. You're the last speaker, then I move to the Minister. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I also welcome this debate tonight and congratulate Ivan McKee for securing it? I think it's a timely debate because, of course, we've got the Scottish Government's strategy on the circular economy. We've got this early intervention policy of the baby box as well, which is incredibly welcome. And I think <laughs> that real nappies can make a valuable contribution to the success of both of those policies. Uh, in the early noughties, we saw a real growth in real nappy networks, providing support and advice to families and I was involved with the launch of the Perthshire one. I think it's been very successful. And on the back of that, we've seen a number of social enterprises as well. Social enterprises providing laundry and collection facilities for parents, but also then working to other areas. Uh, reuse, recycling of toys, of children's furniture, of clothing, of books, saving parents money and diverting waste from landfill. I pay tribute to a num number of organizations, social enterprises in Scotland that are going today, likes of Merry-Go-Round in Glasgow, Kinderhandle, Everything Baby in Inverness, and also Good Green Fun in Stirling, who've literally had trailer loads of stuff coming from the Ruskell family loft over the years, only for trailer loads of stuff to come back in again. We used, we used uh, real nappies successfully ourselves with our two sons. Um, my eldest son did develop a skin condition um, temporarily. We went back to uh, using disposables. But what I noticed at that point was the big impact on our bin, because when we were using the real nappies, our bin was half full on collection day, and we went back to using disposables, it was overflowing again. And it's just dramatic to see the difference. And I think as Claire Baker said, you know, that's a, a real issue today because councils are making significant um, increases in recycling, but we're also seeing a reduction in landfill and a reduction in the cycles of collection and the sizes of the bins as well. So that pressure, that space for landfill is rightly getting smaller and smaller. Now, one solution that's been proposed is to recycle nappies. And there was a pilot that was run in Stirling several years ago. It involved a collection system. Plastic can be recovered. It can be produced amazingly into garden furniture, amongst other um, items. Um, it's probably a better option than landfill, but I don't see it as an effective waste minimization measure. And I don't think it's the best environmental option either. And I know that with the pilot that ran in Stirling, you know, the nappies were getting shipped down to the Midlands in England. Um, so clearly, you know, an environmental impact there. Um, I think that promotion of real nappies has slipped over the last couple of years. I mean, I, I hear that, you know, Gail Ross is very positive experience in the Highlands, but I think there are issues with nurseries and the NHS providing very patchy support um, for the rollout of real nappies. 
um, which I think is a shame because the technology is improving. I think real nappies are on the market now compared to 10 years ago, are less bulky, better at moist moisture retention, uh, easier to wash. And of course, the, ba the baby box uh, is a fantastic idea and it's perhaps a key point where we can influence behavior change as well. Whenever our life circumstances change, there's a, in, an opportunity uh, to influence behavior change. And you know, many members have spoken tonight about the impact in Finland, how the baby box there slash mortality rates. And I think what's also interesting about the Finnish example is that Finnish parents are now offered a cash equivalent. They can take, I think, 140 euros in cash or the baby box, but you still get 95% of parents going for the baby box. And I think that underlines that strong culture in Finland of social welfare. Um, of course, parents receive goodie bags from new parents, from the National Childbirth Trust uh, and the NHS. But I think it makes sense to include real nappies within the baby box and offer this program of support and encouragement for new parents. So I'm very interested to hear uh, the minister's response, not just about real nappies and the baby box, but also about the wider social economy of which this is part of, how we can support organizations to reuse, re repair toys, and you know, critically to save hard push parents money as well. Thank you very much. I call on Mark McDonald, Minister, to respond. You have seven minutes and perhaps she'll tell us whether we require a bigger baby box given all the suggestions made tonight. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I thank Ivan McKee for uh, taking this uh, important issue to the Chamber today? And I think given uh, the number of speakers who have taken part, I think the uh, importance uh, and uh, significance of the baby box uh, and its contents has uh, been highlighted uh, as part of that. Um, the First Minister obviously announced the plan for the baby box uh, in her priorities for government speech to Parliament on the 25th of May um, and as members have highlighted uh, it builds on the example of the Finnish model. Um, we estimate that this will cost around £6 million per year uh, to deliver and we are looking for the box to be a celebration of childhood, uh, a much valued gift from the government uh, recognising the importance of the task of parenting. Uh, in addition there will be a strong focus on maternal and infant health uh, and given the universal offer a robust statement of equality for all of our citizens from birth. I think it would be a, an idea to go through some of the uh, issues that have been raised by uh, the speakers in today's debate. I probably can't cover everything that's been said because uh, we'd be here for quite some time, presiding officer, and I know how strict you are in terms of the timing of debates, um, but I will do my best to cover some of the main issues uh, that have been raised. Um, and I give a commitment that if members feel there are issues that I maybe haven't had the chance to respond to, uh, if they write to me about those, I'll be more than happy to provide uh, a more fulsome response uh, in due course. I think Ivan McKee set out the... the Minister, uh, I've been advised I can give you another two minutes if you well, wish we'll see. We'll, well, well, we'll see how, the, how we get on, presiding officer, shall we? Um, Ivan McKee, I think, set the tone for the debate um, and highlighted, I think, quite correctly, the, the issues that um, real nappies can address uh, in terms of um, the issues around the environment, uh, the issues around uh, support for uh, small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, he also mentioned the issue around uh, the poverty trap. And I think um, there were a number of uh, important speeches in relation to that, comparing uh, the uh, upfront cost of um, reusable nappies versus uh, the perhaps uh, higher cost in the longer term of disposables, but the fact that those are not paid for all in one go up front. I think Claire Baker actually made a couple of important points in relation to this, in the sense that the cost of reusable nappies shouldn't just be measured in terms of the cost that you pay for the nappies themselves. There are obviously the associated energy costs that will come with the washing and potentially drying of those nappies. Uh, and obviously in uh, many of the households that um, we're looking to uh, support in getting lifting, helping lift them out of poverty, fuel poverty is a very real consideration and something that we have to bear mind to. But I think the point nonetheless uh, made by Ivan McKee around that was uh, well made that sometimes the upfront cost uh, masks the, the lifetime cost by comparison. Uh, Miles Briggs uh, made a number of uh, asks, um, some of which uh, obviously he will be 
aware and, and members will be aware, I can't go and uh, commit to everything that is going to be in the baby box. What I can say is that uh, the points that members have raised will be fed into the considerations that we as a government uh, are taking. In terms of his point about dental decay, obviously we have uh, a very uh, good child smile programme uh, and uh, I think we will give active consideration to how best we can support parents uh, in order to ensure that they are playing an active role in terms of uh, the uh, oral health of their children. Um, I think one of the things I want to be very careful about uh, in relation to the baby box is that we don't just have it as a box that is full of pamphlets and leaflets. Uh, offering advice and support to parents through those methods um, because often those are the kind of things that parents will maybe pick up and put down rather than actively supporting parents uh, to perhaps uh, take a different approach to the one that might otherwise be the case. So uh, while I hear what's being said by Miles Briggs around uh, putting in uh, information pamphlets and leaflets, um, I, I, would, I would say that we will certainly consider that, but I would have a, a concern if we ended up with a, a box that was essentially stuffed full of leaflets rather than perhaps items of practical use, such as those which are provided within the Finnish baby box. Uh, Marie Todd uh, brought to us the, the figure of 8 million nappies being changed every day and with most of those being disposable, that's an awful lot of nappies potentially going to landfill. Uh, the point was made by a number of members around um, the uh, Zero Waste Scotland looking at the potential for recycling of disposable nappies. I hear the points that Mr Ruskell makes, but I think uh, in, in reality we are going to be in a situation where even uh, if we were to get significantly increase the uptake on real nappies, there will still be parents out there who have to use disposable nappies. I think it's right and proper that we look at the ways in which uh, we can better deal with disposable nappies uh, and whether there are options around recycling uh, and possibly even uh, I'm aware that some companies do produce uh, disposable nappies which are claimed on the packet to be biodegradable whether that bears witness uh, in terms of how they actually uh, how they actually perform uh, in those circumstances uh, I think is yet to be fully uh, ironed out. Um, Alison Harris and uh, a number of other speakers did make the point that uh, often when we talk about real nappies it does for some people conjure up that image of the huge terry towel and sheets and the safety pins um, but we have moved on and I uh, uh, like a number of members in this chamber uh, used reusable nappies with uh, my son and uh, I was struck by you know, how easy and simple they were to use. Um, often quite messy, but that's the nature of babies. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I do think that there is a job of work to be done in relation to that. Uh, Gail Ross and Gillian Martin uh, brought a number of other items which are worthy of consideration uh, in relation to what might go in the baby box. Obviously, as I, I've said before, I can't give uh, a commitment to whether those items will go in, but I think they have uh, put forward the case uh, appropriately. Um, Mark Ruskell kind of veered off slightly at the end when he talked about other issues that we needed to look at in terms of how do we ensure that, for example, uh, toys can be reused or um, repurposed. And I think um, often what we find and what I find with my children is that while I might think a toy is broken, uh, it still provides uh, a lot of fun and enjoyment for children. And sometimes I think we need to look at things less through the eyes of the parent and more through the eyes of the child, uh, in the sense that uh, often, uh, provided of course that it's safe, uh, many toys that may seem not to work anymore are still uh, enjoyed and played with by children and perhaps being a little bit less hasty to throw them out uh, might, uh, might encourage uh, some, of the, some of the issues that Mr. Ruskell was raising uh, to be addressed. Um, I think... The, the important thing for us to uh, consider, uh, saying officer, is what, what is the aim uh, in terms of the baby box? What is the defining purpose that we uh, have established uh, as why we're bringing the baby box forward? And it is essentially to give all of our children uh, the best start in life. So while I cannot say uh, to members at this precise moment what the contents of the baby box will be, I can commit that we are continuing to explore the options, the options that have been highlighted uh, in the debate this evening, uh, other options which have been written to me by uh, members across the chamber. I would just temper expect uh, and say that we have uh, obviously got to bear in mind the dimensions of the box uh, and the fact that parents have got to actually be able to get it in the car and get it home so we have to bear that in mind as well and that will obviously uh, be a factor in terms of what we can include. Uh, I also want to make sure that we include a range of items uh, so uh, it probably wouldn't be possible for example uh, 
if we did take the decision around reusable nappies to put in a significant number because that would be a space constraint that might mean we couldn't include other items. But I will give active consideration to what has been suggested in the debate tonight. Uh, I'll be continuing to discuss this with officials uh, and as always if members uh, do want to write to me I obviously am happy to consider the issues that they raise uh, but I cannot at this stage give a guarantee in terms of what the contents will be but all of the issues that are being raised this evening are under active consideration. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.